Welcome to The Determined Mom Show, the only marketing podcast dedicated to guiding mom CEOs into tranquility, wealth, and multiplying those precious moments. On today's show, we have Sharon Henderson. She is an amazing mom out of New Zealand. She is the owner of KEM Biz in a Box, and her specialty is building WordPress websites, copywriting, and teaching online courses. You can find her at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash KEM WordPress community. Sharon is a mother of three beautiful children, and she is also a former attorney. So let's listen in as Sharon shares her WordPress experience and also gives us an overview of why WordPress is definitely the best website platform for you to use when building your website for your business. Let's get started. Hey, I am here with Sharon Henderson, and she is the owner of KEM. How do you say it, Sharon? KEM Biz in a Box, where KEM stands, stands for Kiwi Earth Mother. So that's hey. my brand, which originated from my blog. Um, but Kiwi Earth Mother can be a little bit long at times, so I've shortened it to KEM. Very cool. That's awesome. I love it. Kiwi Earth Mother. Awesome. So we'll give the audience a brief synopsis of your career and how you ended up working from home. Okay. Well, I originally started life as a commercial litigator in London, and I did that for many years until I got to a point where I got absolutely sick of standing on the tube under somebody's armpit watching the situation <laughs> drop from the ceiling down. So it wasn't nice. And just the black that would come out when you blew your nose at the end of the day and wow. just rushing, three hours traveling a day, assuming that all the trains connected well. So I actually ended up taking a £10,000 pay cut to move out of the city and worked in the suburbs. But I just still felt that I needed more from life and... They came September the 11th happened with the Twin Towers and I just had a bit of a reality check and I realized that I'd gone all the way through from school to university to law school to this high paying job and I actually hadn't seen anything of the world. So I decided within a month of September the 11th to give everything away and what I had left that fit into a backpack was all I kept. And I was gone. I went to the other side of the world, to Australia, and backpacked around for a year and had a lot of adventures. And during that time, I retrained as a scuba diving instructor with the intention of traveling around the world, teaching people to scuba dive. And to cut a long story short, I ended up just hopping over the ditch, across the ditch to New Zealand, um, where I worked as a scuba diving instructor for a while, and met my husband. And we both ended up retraining as teachers. So I retrained as an English teacher, and he retrained as um, a secondary school teacher, uh, as a, a technology teacher. And we did that for a while, and then... We had a family and that's when I, I realized that I didn't want to go back to that lifestyle. I certainly didn't want to be a lawyer again. The skills and my qualifications didn't transfer very well to New Zealand, which makes no sense given that New Zealand uses English law, but hey-ho. And um, <laughs> really crazy. Yeah, that is kind of funny. It's like, okay, if it's the same law and it doesn't translate, how, what, I don't even understand that, but yeah. No. New Zealand's a little bit funny like that and they just wanted to make me re retrain and pay lots of money and I didn't want to do that. And I didn't want to go back to teaching either because I wouldn't have had the time with my family. Even though you get all the holidays, the amount of marking as a secondary school English teacher, I think the equivalent there's college, isn't it? So college level English teacher. It was just going to be too much. So that's why I started blogging and thought I would monetize my blog and see where working online got me. And I've always loved writing, so that was awesome. And that's when I discovered my love of building websites. And I haven't really looked back since then. I've, it's been an interesting journey, that's for sure. And it hasn't taken me the down the path I'd really uh, envisioned that it would. But I'm so glad that I'm doing this because it means I can be there for my kids. 
and that for me is, is, is the most important thing. I didn't want them to be in before school care and after school care and not be able to spend the time with them when they come back from school. And I get to do all that now. I get to spend that time. That is my story in a nutshell. <laughs> That's awesome. I think it's a wonderful story, and I had no idea. I I didn't uh, catch the scuba diver thing when we talked the other day. (laughs) That threw me for a loop. I was like, what? She was a scuba instructor? Um, That's awesome. You have a lot of different uh, careers, and I love it, and I love that you keep evolving. I think Mm. that's amazing. It's quite funny, actually. I remember we had a careers course type thing at school. So this was what, when I was, how old would I have been? 14, 15, when you're just trying to decide what you're going to do and where you're going to go. And we did this test on a computer where you were asked a lot of questions and then it would spit out whatever your, your best career would be. And it said teaching. And I remember poo-pooing it at the time, thinking, I'm never going to be a teacher. And so I did all these other things. But if I look back on it, apart from the law, which I chose to do more to prove a point than I could do what was at the time the hardest degree, that just happened to be law. So that aside, everything I've done underneath it all has been about teaching people to scuba dive, teaching kids. I've taught business studies to adults. And now I've got my my WordPress course, which again is teaching, and I'm teaching people in my Facebook group as well. So it's quite ironic that I went full circle and that that original test was correct. So yeah. Really, yeah. It, uh, it makes you wonder how accurate those tests are. I mean, I think mine said I was going to be in sales. I remember in like seventh or eighth grade or what, I don't, I don't remember what year they say that, but it's kind of funny because I've always been in sales pretty much my entire career. So. Funny, isn't it? It's funny. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I don't know about you, but I, I paid no notice to that whatsoever. That yeah. It was so accurate. Yeah. I didn't either. And the thing that's funny about it is I think it's really difficult to know what you want to do when you're 13, 14, let alone like 20, 25, you know, like you and I, we both had so many different career paths. And yeah, I just don't think it's entirely possible to know what you want to do. I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. So neither <laughs> that's the thing I mean the, the brain is still forming when you have to make those decisions and in this day and age people don't stay in the same job from when they start until when they retire you go through multiple different career paths and, and that's cool I think yeah I think it is too yeah I think it's really cool that as mothers we can evolve with our children and with you know the different phases as they grow I think that's an amazing thing too so yeah, so obviously you live in New Zealand, right? Right now? In Auckland, New Zealand. Okay, yes. perfect. And are you originally from New Zealand or are you originally from the UK? Originally from the UK. Okay. Born in Manchester, so a northern lass originally. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Awesome. I am uh, building a membership site, so the people that run the course that I'm following to build it, it's called... Um, member site academy and they're all from England and I absolutely love listening to all of the lectures and the lessons and the videos I'm like yay and I listen to their podcast so <laughs> I love it <laughs> I love the accent yeah for me it's it's like being home away from home when I especially when I hear the northern accent yeah um, it's a slow accent but mm-hmm. it, it there's just something about it that takes me back home it's nice Oh, that's nice. It sounds like to me, like you've picked up a little of the New Zealand accent too. Do you think? Well, maybe a little bit. And it's yeah. funny listening to my kids, especially my younger two, the way they talk. I yeah. don't know where they've got their accent from, but it, it's the funniest little accent. It oh, it's a mix. Yeah. My kids have say some things funny too, especially like the baby when they're little, because my husband is from West Africa and I'm from here. So he's got a different accent. So they say some words like completely like you're like, what? I don't, I don't understand, but yeah. It's some difference that they embrace that difference because mm-hmm. there's too too much of, of trying to all be the same. And I think you need to celebrate your differences. In your- yeah, I agree. I hope so too. We know um, that you started building WordPress sites. When did that happen? Like what made you go to WordPress? What attracted you to WordPress other than other blogging platforms and How'd that happen? Oh, well, I, I fell upon it, really. I was looking for something else to do, and I, was in, I, I hadn't gone back to work, but I knew I needed to exercise my brain in some way. And a friend of mine was dabbling in building sites, 
And so she just said to me, well, you have to use WordPress and you have to use this host and you have to. And so that's, that's how I got into it. It was purely fortuitous that I got into WordPress because I, I could have gone with Joomla or any of the other open source platforms. I'm not sure Shopify and Wix and the likes were that big when I first started. So I think WordPress was a natural choice and I'm really grateful for that. Very, very grateful that I started in the right place, but it was poor luck. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. You could have easily gone astray there. And then I think a lot of, is Joomla even still around? Do they, is it still even a platform that people use? I think it must be because when I go into my hosting, they, they still have one click installs for all those different. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. And I think in those days when I started, WordPress really did. It was synonymous with blogging, which of course is no longer the case now. So I think it was a, just a natural voice that, that was probably going to happen anyway at that time with the, with just with the way things were in the, with WordPress being associated purely with blogging at the time. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Why do you think that WordPress is where it is today? Like, I think is it there's a statistic that's like a certain percentage of a huge percentage I think it's like 30 or 40 percent of the websites on the internet are WordPress are built with WordPress even like huge companies use WordPress so what in your opinion is the value of having a WordPress site over a Wix site or a Squarespace site or Joomla or any of those builders? My favorite topic to talk about, and it's funny, I was, I was just um, having a, a debate with people in, in one of the groups that I help out in about this very topic because people go, oh, I'm going to go to Shopify. And, and the reason why WordPress is the way to go is because it puts the power in your hands. If you were to imagine starting any other sort of business, can you imagine growing everything around a company and that have complete control over everything. There are, from my understanding with Wix, because I had somebody in my group looking to start with Wix, and I just pointed out to them the pros and cons of that. They tried to change, and Wix wouldn't let them have their domain back. So they even hold your domain, which is terrifying, because your domain is your business. It's your name. It's what people know and recognize you as. And so... Fortunately, she was starting very early on, so she was able to actually get her money back from the plan she was on, and she was able to relinquish the domain because she hadn't built any goodwill or brand recognition or association with that. But that in itself is a huge reason not to put everything into somebody else's hands in that way. Um, you make yourself incredibly vulnerable, and that's where WordPress comes into its own because it's open source software, and you own it, and you own it outright. With Shopify, you can spend all that money and all that time advertising and building your site and growing your customer base around a platform that you only own for as long as you keep paying the rent. I always say to people, why rent when you can buy? Why rent when you can own outright? And, and that's the biggest thing for me with work. Yeah. And, People might say, yeah, well, you say that, but what about the hosting? You still have to pay for hosting, and that's a monthly fee. But it's completely different because if you're not happy with what a host is doing, then you just move. You can migrate the site and move somewhere else, and that's the beauty of it. You still own your website. You'll download that file or use a plugin and you'll migrate it somewhere else. So to me, that is the biggest reason why it makes absolutely no sense to build a site on somebody else's platform. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, well, that's it in a nutshell. There's lots of other advantages, but to me, they're all secondary. Yeah. For example, SEO, you will not get the same SEO status with a Shopify store or a Wix store or Weebly or any of these other platforms compared with WordPress. And yeah. Right off the bat, Google loves WordPress sites and, and you get a, a, an SEO boost straight away from that alone. Which to me is another really big reason to go with it. I could go on and on. <laughs> I agree completely, and <laughs> I encounter pretty much daily people that need help with their SEO because that's you know one of the things that my company does, and we get in there, and, and that's the first thing that I look look at is like what is this built with, and. If it's built with a Shopify site or a, a Wix site, Shopify is a little bit easier to do SEO for because you can maximize the 
SEO for all of the products individually and that kind of thing. And that gives you a little bit more juice. But with Squarespace and Wix, we can't really control a lot of the technical issues that we can with WordPress. I mean, with WordPress, you can speed the site up like instantaneously by doing a few things. And with Squarespace and Wix, you're limited to what they allow you to do. So I think it's definitely something that people overlook. And if anybody is listening and you're deciding between any of those, please, 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 from Sharon and I, (laughs) pick WordPress. (laughs) It's not expensive. No, and it doesn't have to be that hard. With the advent of page builders, it it really doesn't have to be hard these days. You don't need coding knowledge. You don't need technical expertise. You can figure it all out yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, and if you decide that you want to hire somebody to do the design side of things, then it's an initial outlay. It's not an ongoing cost. And you're not going to hit a certain level and all of a sudden discover there's all these massive restrictions and suddenly your fees, what, do they quadruple or triple? I think there's a basic fee with Shopify that I think is 30 US dollars a month, but it jumps up to 200. Mm-hmm. Once you get to a certain level, but that doesn't include all the add-ons that you need, uh, and it just goes up and up and up. Whereas with WordPress, you go to your plugin and um, repository, and they're all free. Yes, if you want to upgrade a plugin, then you can, but you get the basic plugins that you often can manage perfectly well with as as the open source free version without having all those extra costs. So it may seem cheap to start out, but it really isn't cheap. Yeah. And you also have the addition of like email and those kind of things. And people don't realize that when you get a WordPress site and you have it hosted, your hosting provider is going to provide you with your domain email. So, and then you can just forward it to a Gmail account or whatever and reply. And I mean, it's just like you have your own domain name in a Gmail, or you can always purchase G Suite if you want to do that. But I think that's something that people overlook as well. And I know Wix has that add on of like, okay, we'll give you your email. And I think I'm not sure about Squarespace, how they do that. But I think Squarespace might include the email, but it's definitely something to consider. There's a lot of extra little costs there. I agree with you on that. They really do. Um, yeah. I, love. I think with Squarespace, it's, it's quite a restricted platform as to what you can do as well. I think Wix is, is easier to design with, but my understanding, I was just talking to a colleague the other day and she was saying Squarespace is just way too restricted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Squarespace, you can do anything you want. And one, one other thing that I've really noticed, I can tell straight away if a site has been built with one of these platforms because all the sites look the same. They all have a limited number of themes and they're all laid out the same way. And once you see a few of them, um, you lose impact. And, and ultimately, unless you're just focusing on drop shipping or something like that, you need to stand out. You need to establish your brand. You need to have that brand infused into your website. And you just don't get that with shopping. Buy and, and the other sites, they all look the same. Yeah, I definitely encounter that with SEO. Like when I'm, I'm looking at the sites and it's just, it's basically like a picture at the top and then maybe a slider or something. And <laughs> I've noticed a lot of photographers use them, like Squarespace and Wix, and which is really probably the worst thing for photographers to use because of you can't really do too much to speed it up. And those images are so big and they're really high quality and yeah. Also, I wasn't aware of that because I have very limited experience. So I've done a little bit with Shopify, just somebody who couldn't code and needed some help um, with the coding, with the, the liquid code that they have there. I wasn't aware you can't upload optimized images. Well, you can, but it's that a lot of times people are building it themselves and they don't. Right. Like, if that makes sense, because it's a, an easier way of doing things. They don't necessarily do all of those things and take those things into consideration. But with WordPress, if you don't do that, it's okay because we can just go in and optimize it really quickly with plugins and that kind of thing. But yeah. You have to download individually and optimize each image to you with these other platforms. So that sounds like an absolute nightmare. Yeah, that's what you would have to do in, in some of them. Yeah. So it's a little extra work. Yeah, I think it's like anything. If something seems really easy and cheap, then ask yourself why. (laughs) 
that's my philosophy in life because life is not easy. Yeah. You can't do a shortcut mm-hmm. and get decisions properly and get your foundations in place before you try to to, to run. So yes, that's that's my experience. Hopefully yeah. that the question on WordPress. I could go on and on. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And can you give us like a, a general like startup cost for WordPress? I know you mentioned um, like Shopify starts at around $30 a month. So if someone was to host their site on WordPress, does WordPress itself cost anything? How much is a typical hosting plan? Do you have any of those figures in your head? I'm sure I can flat them from my head somewhere. I'm sure they're all stored away. So I'm just trying, I'm just thinking it through. So in order to actually install WordPress, you need to start with a host because you need to have your content stored somewhere. So you pick your host first and most hosts these days have a one click install. So you go to, if it's, if it's hosted using cPanel, cPanel is basically a, a platform that has a myriad of different tools for different things. So you can set your email up there. You can do a one-click install of WordPress. There's a whole host of tools that you can use. So you can literally click on the WordPress icon and it opens up a screen that then takes you through with all the different fields that you need to enter. And it's very easy to name and where you want where the path is going to be. It's, it's very simple. And they take you through it. And then, hey, presto, you've got this WordPress site. So that aspect is free. You need to pay for your hosting. Um, hosting plans really do vary. It depends whether you want to go for something budget and then move later or whether you want to go for something decent in the beginning. Say you're paying between $10 and $15 a month for hosting. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I charge. Yeah. My hosting plans for people. Um, and you get your free SSL. And for people that aren't aware, um, if you have the padlock in your browser, that means that your site is secure, and that's super important. It means that all, all the data between the person visiting and your site is encrypted, and, and that's essential. And what Google have done, uh, Chrome, sorry, have done now, is that if you have your site is not secure, then a big warning comes up telling people don't proceed and it's not safe to do so. So it's really important to have SSL. It's not good for your business if you don't. And then you need your domain name as well, which is mybusinessname.com, for example. Mm-hmm. So for me, it would be kembizinabox.com is one of my domains. But the beauty of WordPress is that you can move your site and, and change, point your domain to wherever you like. If you're with Wix, they will keep your domain and your brand association. All, all, all the branding that goes with that is gone. <laughs> and domains are super cheap. I would always go with Namecheap. I love them. They are super fast when it comes to propagation so if you want to change where your domain's pointing if you move posts or something then it can be done in five minutes whereas a lot of other registrars who sell domain names it can take 24 to 72 hours and your site can be done in that nightmare and that's something i've found with my dot nz domains a word to the wise don't do anything other than dot com go for a top tier domain name every time um, I, in my early days, went for .nz, and so I had to use registrars in New Zealand in order to get that .nz, and I don't know why it is, but their propagation times can be days. Kind of thing. <laughs> so go with, name, go with name cheap. They're super fast, super cheap, and the support is 24-7 and awesome. And it will cost you between 10 and $25 a year. So you can see already the costs are really low. Um, and then anything that you add on as an extra, you would have to do that with Shopify or Wix or whatever anyway. So let's say you didn't want to go for one of the millions of free themes out there. You could go for a premium theme or um, a premium page builder. And those, my favorite's flat um, that's a one-off license fee of $59, and that in, in entitles you to um, lifetime updates. So it really isn't expensive. It doesn't have to be 
sense. And that's about it. Unless you want something really specialized um, where you need a premium plugin or let's say you want to set up a course with a learning management system um, where you might pay oh, around $200 a year for that. But, you know, we're getting specialized now. And I don't even know if Shopify, Wix and Weebly and all the rest of it even offer those. So you'd have to actually go to a specific platform for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, extra. So if you were pressed, you can do it all in house. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, that's the pricing in a nutshell. It really isn't a lot. What are the plugins like for someone getting started with WordPress? What is like the five plugins that you have to install right away? Like I have my own preferences, but I'm kind of curious of uh, what yours are. I don't have a site up in front of me, so I'm working completely from memory. Right. And- the first thing I would do is delete Hello Dolly. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know why that's in there. That drives me nuts too. Oh, like, and I would also delete, oh, what's it called? There's another one, uh, a Kismet. I delete a Kismet too. Mm-hmm. Loaded plugin. It's always there on a fresh install. And you have to actually sign up on their website in order to use it. Just get rid of it. And I would be using WordFence. Mm-hmm because it's a solid plugin for security. Yes, it's probably a little bit heavyweight, more heavyweight than I would ideally like. I actually myself have installed multiple very lightweight plugins that just focus on firewall, on multiple login attempts, you know, all the different aspects because they are lightweight. But then after being hacked when I moved to SiteGround, I decided to go back to WordFence just to be certain. So that's a definite. Loginizer tends to be installed by default. I've kind of left that one. Um, that does prevent multiple logins by hackers, login attempts by hackers. Easy, WP Easy SNTP is another one that I tend to install. That just enables you to reduce the chance of your emails coming through your website going to spam. And it enables you to send and receive email via contact forms and the like. So that's a good one. But again, make sure you update that when as soon as updates become available because that's how my site got hacked through that plugin. Oh, wow. In okay. time. So one to be aware of. I'm trying to think what else. If it's a blog, I would install Yoast. Some people say it's bloated, but I've been through all of them. Some of the other ones are much more lightweight, but they don't do as good a job at teaching you how to SEO your site the right way. If you're writing posts, you really want to get your keywords right. You really want to get your titles the right length, and it gives you that that juice that you need as well for SEO purposes. Yeah. How many of them have I have done my five years? <laughs> I haven't been counting how many things. You have one, two, three, four. You give us four. Um, one of them that you had mentioned before was Swift Pro. Yes, I have that on my e-commerce store because it's the best caching plugin I've found. Because not only is it great for caching, but it also um, is excellent for optimizing images. It mm-hmm. does a lot and it does it in bulk. There is no other plugin out there that does all of that without you paying quite a lot for it. So I would rather pay for Swift and get all that in one. You do need to set it up correctly, and that will very much determine, that that will very much depend on where your hosting is, what the technology is that they're using, to push it simply. But if you're not sure, their support's fabulous. Um, I just emailed the, the chat there when I moved to SiteGround and I just said, so I was too busy to, to go through it all and try and figure it out myself. I said, look, I've moved to SiteGround. It's a different hosting um, setup. Can you have a look at my settings all right? And he went in and he sorted all my settings out and my GT metrics for us. So this is... Um, Online, it's something you can run your site through for people who don't know and tell you what the site performance is like and why. And overnight, gone in while I was sleeping, he went into my site, sorted it all out. I ran a GT metrics performance test in the morning and it was amazing. That's awesome. Absolute fun. And I managed to get that for something like $5 for the first year. It will go up, but it'll be worth every penny. 
And you said your favorite theme is called flat sum. Is that right? Yes, flat sum's not a theme. It's a page builder. Okay, so page builder. Got it. There is a difference for those that, that are listening that don't know. You have a theme is basically a template that enables you to add information and customize to a certain extent. But if you're a website designer, we like to start from scratch and do things the way we want to do them. And the page builder gives you that ability. The best ones out there, from my experience, are flatsome because it only puts in there the functionality you need um, as opposed to having everything in there, which to the uninitiated may seem fabulous. But the reality is if you've got a whole load of extra functionality and customization options in there that most people don't need, it's just going to hit your performance of your site and make it slower. So that's why Flatsum is really good because they just focus on what you absolutely need. And it's built with WooCommerce in mind. The two of them um, work together beautifully. So if you want to use an e-commerce site, then I highly recommend Flatsum. If you want a general site, so without having a store attached to it, personally, I still use Flatsum because I know it and it's easy to use and it produces a really beautiful effect. Um, but another one that I'm dying to get um, to have a play with is Elementor. Elementor is different in that you use it with a theme. So your best bet is to choose a lightweight theme. Um, I think there's the Genesis framework themes or um, even Storefront would be good for e-commerce or any of the really lightweight themes. And then what Elementor as a plugin does is it enables you to customize that theme and it lays down... CSS rather than short code and the beauty of that is you switch themes without being left with all these short codes all over your pages whereas Flatsum if you're with Flatsum you have to be with Flatsum for good because mm -hmm. if you try to switch you'll be left with all this code everywhere so, so there are pros and cons Flatsum's a lot cheaper at $59 a year compared with Elementor I can't remember how much it is but it's an annual fee which as a one-off is fine but if you're building sites for lots of people who want to do it on a budget it can be a bit of an issue so for me and for the course that I'm doing it made more sense to go with Flatsum because um, as part of the course I'll be setting people up with a demo or a starter WordPress site and for me to pay for um, Elementor for every single site um, the basically the, the sums don't work for me to give that away so Flatsum made more sense. That's awesome. We may have already gone over this, but what is the question that you're asked the most about WordPress? So as a WordPress expert, like, what is the one question that people are always like, hey, can you tell me this? Um, I think there's this preconceived notion that WordPress is hard and that you need coding skills. And that may have been true um, when I started, but you don't need that now. And you can do it yourself. There is a learning curve, but you can do it yourself. And that's why I've designed this course that um, we'll be launching this month to take people through the process step by step to demystify WordPress and show you the tips and tricks that will save you lots and lots of time and avoid the white screen of death. <laughs> I just, yeah, it's like the stomach drops to your ankles. When yeah. It's not nice. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So tell us more about your course. Like, what is it? What's the name? Where can people find it? I am just finishing off my landing page for it as we speak. It will be at challenge.kemvisinabox.com. So that's challenge.kem as in short for two years, mother biz, B-I-Z, in I-N, a box dot com. Perfect. And I will make sure that we have that link in the show notes so that way everybody can access it. Fantastic. So that's, that's awesome. basically, um, you go to the opt-in page and you have the ability to avail yourself of a free website that will be pre-installed with my favorite theme, my favorite pick of plugins, and it will be hosted for 30 days so that you can try it 
and and fall in love with WordPress the way that we have. And then after that page, you'll be taken to the course, which is totally optional, but highly recommended because it is a very, very small price that it will cost you. And that has all the step-by-step, over-the-shoulder style tutorials that will take you through from the very beginning um, when you have your starter website right through to um, launching an online business. So it's well, well worth the money. There's lots of bonuses, including access to my Facebook group that's already a thriving community, plus there'll be a new um, mastermind group where we'll be holding weekly Q&A sessions to help you along the way. So it really is an awesome course, and I wish that I had had something like that when I started out with it. Yeah, I agree. I think that's an awesome course for them to uh, be able to basically they're getting a free website is that right that's right free website free hosting with a quality web host Um, and then once they have that if they love it which i'm sure that they will then they can take over the hosting and if they go for the course then there's going to be super cheap hosting rates that will be a fraction of what it would cost you to um, start a site on with Weebly, squarespace or shopify Yeah, that's awesome. That is amazing. That's a huge value, I think, especially not just starting a WordPress site, like starting it on the best platform, but also starting it with someone really walking you through step by step exactly what you're, you know, what you need to learn, what you need to do, what you need to pay attention to, what you don't need to pay attention to. I think that's a huge deal. So... And then to have a group as well where you can ask all your questions whenever you want, plus to have those weekly lives where you can ask your specific questions and get them answered. As I say, I wish I could have been something like that around when I went through the process and spent about a year (laughs) building my first site. And you can get it done in 30 days. That's the challenge. It's a 30-day challenge. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. That's a really good time frame because most people, it'll take them <laughs> a little longer than 30 days. <laughs> oh, all right. So let me switch gears back to working from home with your kids around. What is your favorite thing? We'll end with this. What's your favorite thing about working at home and being around your kids? Well, it's the flexibility. 100% it's the flexibility. My kids, I've had all three of them tag, tag teaming to, for the last two weeks, sick. And to be able to be flexible, to be able to be able to take that time off and look after them and work when they're sleeping, work in their evening, just change my schedule and have that flexibility that I wouldn't otherwise have. So that's a massive, massive player for me and probably the biggest the biggest thing and also just being able to be mobile if I want to go to a cafe and work and have a nice cappuccino I can do that yeah Um, completely mobile Um, I don't have to sit in traffic I don't have to waste all those hours that I used to waste just sitting in a car it just makes sense and I work when I want to work I don't have to rock up at whatever time in the morning and just be there and do a job when I'm not maybe feeling yeah. Or, um, things are just not it's not the right time, but you can do your time. That's not an effective way to work, but it's the way most people have to work. So when I do work, I work intensively and flexibly and productively, and that's another massive bonus for me. And I'm working for myself, and I don't have to answer to anyone except for my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the best part of it. I, you know, one of, it's hard to say what the best part is, but, but yeah, I definitely like that too. I like that, that flexibility of knowing that I'm not answering to anyone else. Uh, I like that too. So and to be able to, like, be able to schedule in podcasts and things in my, in the times, around the times that work for me. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's really awesome. And also it keeps the passion going for what you do. Because you are answerable to your own schedule and you're working your own times that work for you. And I think that keeps the passion going and the love of what you do going too. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here and for sharing all of your amazing WordPress knowledge. Where is the best place, if you wanted to name one place that everyone can find you and connect with you, what is the best place for them to do that? It would be my group. So if you just search KEM WordPress Community 
all one word, then you will find the group. It's just a, a free Facebook group that anybody is welcome to join. So KEM WordPress Community. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you for being here and sharing all of your knowledge and sharing about your awesome project that's coming up. I'm super excited to see your course and see how many people you help. I think it's going to be a great thing for people. So much, Amanda. It's been a lot of fun to see you. All right. Thank you. This episode of the Determined Mom Show is brought to you by OnlineMarketingForMoms.com the only marketing membership that allows mom CEOs to take hold of the reins of their marketing and learn DIY SEO, website building, marketing, and so much more. To join or for more information, please visit onlinemarketingformoms.com.